So how far forward is too far forward? Hmm. What's good, super riders? This bike behind me here is Old Faithful. I've been riding this bike for over a decade, and I actually got this bike in Japan when I was visiting my friend Kenichi. He runs the shop Gold Rush, which is the big trial shop over there. And when I came to visit him, he had this bike waiting for me. We had such an amazing week riding it. I had to have that bike. And so he sent it back with me, and I've been riding it ever since. This bike has pretty much stayed in about the same shape since we rode it together over a decade ago. And after it bailed me out a couple weeks ago on a lunge tutorial video, I decided that it was probably time to make some updates to it. Here's a quick rundown of the parts that I'm gonna update on this bike. And most important is gonna be a new bar. And this is the new Krukers bar. It basically weighs nothing, it's all carbon. I have a pretty flat trial tech bar on here. And these bars are meant to be rolled super far forward. So I'm really curious to see, this is like the new style of handlebar. These are kind of the original handlebars. So this is gonna make a huge difference on the way that the bike feels. So I'm gonna pair that with this Krukers stem. This is a 135 millimeter stem with a 20 degree rise, which means it's a bit flatter and longer than the one I've had on there. So that combined with rolling these bars super forward is gonna give this bike a completely new feel and make it feel like even more of a pogo stick. One other update I'm gonna to make to the bike are these special brake levers. And these are from my friend Alex in San Francisco. He made these custom brake levers and I've been running the same Maguras on this bike for a pretty long time. I've bled them a billion times and it's just time for a new lever and, and to try something new. So I've been sitting on these for a little bit. I have a feeling I'm gonna put these on and realize that I made a huge mistake not putting them on earlier. He did a really good job just dialing this thing in and. You know, a trials rider who's also an engineer who then made a break, this seems like the best case scenario. So this is a bit of an unknown, but I think it's gonna be awesome. So to wrap this up, we basically got a whole new front end on the bike, new grips, new brake levers, new bar and stem, and a new bar and stem that's gonna rotate the bike way forward and give it kind of like a new bike feel. And I almost forgot, I have this angle grinder bit. If you're gonna bleed the brakes, put new brakes on, you should definitely have a fresh grind. So we're gonna grind the rims as well. This is the new stem that I'm putting on the bike. This is a 20 degree rise stem. And just to show you, this is the stem that was on the bike, way higher rise than the stem I'm about to have. This was really comfortable to ride because it set me up a little bit. This new stem is gonna push me a lot far forward on the bike, which is kind of what I want. I'm gonna be jumping to the front wheel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more stuff that's more pogo stick style on this bike. And so this will actually put me in a different riding position, which I think is actually a good thing. But wait till you see the bars. This is the bar that I had on the bike originally, and there's a little bit of a rise to it, but not much. I did have it sort of rotated far forward, but not too far forward. But the new bar is actually made to be rotated forward and it also has a very, very high rise. This is gonna change the feel of the bike for sure. The wildest thing about these bars actually is that when you're holding them and looking down at them, I'm not sure if I have them the right way around. And it's because the back sweep and the rise is so much different from every other handlebar I've ridden. These are meant to be rolled forward and they're meant to be comfortable when you roll them forward. So it just has such a weird look to it when you're holding it off the bike. Now that I've got the bar and stem on, the next step would normally be to update the brakes, but I'm just too anxious to find out what this setup actually rides like. So we're gonna take a little intermission just to see how this new bar and stem feels and then we'll switch out the brakes and give the rims a new grind. With this new bar and stem setup, it's gonna put me in a different position on the bike. I'm gonna be a lot more straight up and down. And one of the things that's gonna happen as a result is that I'm gonna have to change the angle of which my brake levers are on the bar. Usually I had them up just a little bit and that was because I was at more of an angle than straight up and down. But now that I'm gonna be in this more vertical stance, I'm gonna have to rotate my levers down just a little bit so that my wrists aren't kinked when I'm riding. You don't want them to be down like this or up like this. That's not comfortable, especially for as much time as we spend on the back wheel. So I'm gonna have to adjust this just a little bit more than I normally would. So we've got a good starting point here. Let's just go test it out and see how it feels and make adjustments on the fly. This looks so crazy. But let's just see how this feels once we get up onto the back wheel. <laughs> it's actually really easy to stay up on the back wheel, like easier than it's ever been. And it does feel pretty comfortable. I mean, I know that this works, but wow, it feels weird. 
It's gonna take some readjustment from where I put my body weight to being so far forward. Just even getting up onto the back wheel is gonna feel a lot different. You gotta really get your weight back and work for it. But then once you get up there, you're pretty much set. Let's maybe try this on here and see how this goes. Cause I think I'm gonna have way more room. I'll have a lot more space to move around for this movement. Plenty of room, almost too much room. <laughs> Woo, so much power. I thought I was actually going really extreme with how far forward I was pushing these, but actually I feel like I could push it way farther and this is probably closer to where I'll actually end up. But let's try it. Let's go a little bit further. Let's really rotate these to like an extreme position. I honestly thought I was going crazy and that this is way too far forward, but this is actually pretty close to what might be right. But just for the sake of finding out, because I learned this lesson the last time, I'm gonna go really extreme, like way ridiculous and see what happens. I can't believe how much power I actually had with this particular setup. So I just wonder if pushing it a little bit further is gonna make it even better or if we will have gone too far, but let's just, let's find out. At this stage, how far is too far? I mean, this just feels wrong, which is exactly what I wanna find out. How far can I push it before I've just gone too far? When I think about how the previous setup felt on the back wheel, it was actually kind of perfect. I was straight up and down, but maybe this is, I don't know, somehow even better. I'm gonna have to fix the brakes because now they're coming back at me though. <laughs> this to me feels really, really extreme. We're way past being in line with the stem. The brake levers are actually coming back at me, which I think I'm probably gonna adjust. But when I had it in the previous position, I felt great up on the back wheel. It felt like a completely new bike and I'm just curious to see if what my definition of extreme is gonna make the bike feel even better. This just looks so weird and I can't even imagine riding it on the ground, on flat ground, but I also know it's probably gonna feel great once I get up on the back wheel. It's just challenging to even look at this and feel like this is gonna work, but here goes. <laughs> this feels so strange. I almost feel like the handlebar is like <laughs> bent or broken, but let's get up on the back wheel and see how it feels. Kind of the same. The hardest part about having the handlebars rotated so far forward is not that it, it feels any different on the back wheel, but it just takes a little bit more effort to get up onto the back wheel. Your weight is so far forward that you have to really work to get your weight really far back to get up onto the back wheel. Well, once you do, it's pretty normal in that position. Let's try this on a lunge and see how it feels. Again, I'm gonna have all kinds of room to work with, but is this gonna be better or worse? My best case scenario would actually be to have this at a moderate range and not so extreme so that I could sort of ride it around. So the trade off here is, you know, can I ride it around, but I, do I still get all the benefits? Am I missing anything by not having it in an extreme position like this? So let's try this lunge and see how it feels. This movement feels like it's the best one to really test out because it's the one where you would need the most space and you'd probably benefit the most from something like this. You have maximum control over this front wheel, that's for sure. And if you're doing a lot of work with the front wheel, I guess it makes sense. But I feel like I'm almost off balance. I'm way over the front and I'm working way too hard for that front wheel. Ooh. So I think we found the limit here. This feels way too extreme, although not terrible. I think if I was trying to do a lot of front wheel stuff, this would be great. And you know, a lot of people do favor their front wheel when they're riding in a really high level. It just feels like the bike is now unbalanced because all of my weight is far forward and I'm not getting anything on the back wheel. I have to do a lot of work to get to the back wheel. So we'll rotate this back to almost like an extreme this way to see just where we're gonna fit in. But I have a feeling that we actually started off in a pretty good spot. You can see here how much we've actually rotated these bars back because now the levers aren't pointing straight down, they're pointing straight out. So I'm gonna modify these slightly, but this is what I would consider to be the opposite extreme. So this is not straight in line with the, the stem and actually is coming back just a little bit. These are really high rise bars and it's pushing me out way over the front wheel no matter what, because I have this 135 millimeter stem and then I have another 108 millimeters on top of that. So it's really pushing me way out in front of the bike 
even though I'm not rotating it down, I'm still gonna be in a way different position. It's still, no matter what position I put these bars in, giving me a lot of leverage over the front wheel and lengthening out that essentially effective top tube. You know, this bike is basically made like a giant lever. And if I pull this handlebar back towards me like I have here and adjust the brakes, what kind of feeling am I gonna get from that? Got my brake levers back in place. Now let's try this version out. That actually felt the most comfortable of the three and it felt the most normal to me, but I didn't feel like I was getting the same kind of advantages that I did from the very first position we tried out. So I think to set this bar in place, I'm gonna go to kind of that moderate, extremely far forward one and just ride from there and see how that goes. So basically what I've done here is rotated my handlebars back to the first position that we tried, which is slightly past even with my stem here. Now, I wanna talk about this for a second of like, why are we doing this? Why is this rotated super far forward? Should I do this to my bike? And the reason why we're doing this is because this bike is meant to hop on the back wheel and I'm optimizing for hopping on the back wheel and being able to do all the moves from my back wheel. And to do that to the most effective level, I wanna have the bike almost as straight up and down as I possibly can and have it be comfortable in that position. That's why it's kind of challenging to ride on flat. That's why the levers are straight down essentially. And if you remember back to the original back hop tutorial I did, one of the suggestions that I made was if you're just working on hopping on your back wheel, rotate your bars forward, rotate your levers down and optimize for being comfortable on that back wheel until you get it. And then you can change back to your street trial setup or whatever else you want. And so if I'm really trying to be the best at hopping on the back wheel with this bike and doing all the moves off a of back wheel, then I wanna have the most optimized setup. And I think this is about what I've got here. So I wanna test this and get comfortable on this because this is gonna set me up in the most vertical position on that back wheel and be comfortable where I can hang out there for a long time, get comfortable, hold my balance for a long time. And I think we've got this in a pretty good place. I'm gonna test it now a little bit more just to start getting comfortable riding with this new position because it makes the bike feel completely different. But I think in the end, it's gonna be a good thing. Terrifying. <laughs> One thing is for sure on these handlebars, they're definitely not something you instantly adjust to. I'm struggling here just to get comfortable doing really anything on these bars, but I know it's like the right thing, you know? I feel like switching to these bars on this bike is going to be a long-term positive thing, but it's gonna be frustrating for a couple days to ride with this and adjust to it. So now that we've kind of worked out where the handlebar is gonna be on the bike, it's time to update the rest of everything. So I have these Deity Slim Fit grips that I'm gonna to toss on there, and I'm also gonna put these brand new custom brakes on. I'm gonna bleed these brakes, and then after I finish all of that, the last piece to do is grind the rims and just get them absolutely perfect. So let's make all those changes right now. Wish me luck. <laughs> Wish me luck. Is there a name for a bad mechanic who also has bad luck? Because that is 100% me. I've somehow managed to break the needle driver, which is the piece that helps me connect the barb fitting into the end of this hydraulic line so I can then put it into the brake lever. <laughs> so bummed. At this point, we're probably gonna have to skip to a part two of this whole thing so I can actually get this going again and ride this bike. In the meantime, go check out this video right here, which is the last time I rode this bike to my highest ability. It's the Moto Trials versus Trials video, and I absolutely love it. It's one of the favorite videos that I've ever made for this channel. I hope you like it, and I'll see you on part two.